My name is John Thorne from Silver Sun Shooting Centre and welcome to our basic safety course for the sport of practical mini rifle. Now we run practical courses here, safety courses for people, there are a variety of more formal safety courses, but we have decided here at Silverstone that we won't demand a safety course in order to compete here, with a couple of caveats which I'll explain later on. So we thought we would do a video that basically explains what happens in a safety course, and this covers pretty much every safety course. There are subtle differences between UK PSAs and other people's, mainly about rules and regulations and bits, but the actual process of what exercises you go through to shoot safely for a practical mini rifle, and this applies to shotgun and also LBP to some extent, although this, this video is not designed for that, is to go through what exercises that you need to do and to get right in order to pass a safety course so you can compete on various circuits. Now, there's nothing official about this. It's simply done for us. I'll be super doing it to help people going shooting. So if you are going to do a safety course, watching this video first will help you. At least it becomes a bit less um, of a surprise when you get there. But it's useful to have this as a process. Now, all the exercises that you do in the course, this video you will do in a course of various safety courses in the UK has. Um, but as all these things, practice is perfect. Most of what we do is common sense, but it's about practicing and making sure you get it right each time. So the course, this video takes two parts. Um, first part is simply going through the exercises and what you need to learn to shoot to shoot practical mini rifle. So it covers from different shooting positions, dynamic shooting, moving around, start positions, course of fire, that kind of stuff. The second part of the video is uh, what we can say is what to expect at a competition. So it basically details what to happen, what to expect, what to do, what not to do. So when you turn your first competition with your wonderful safety course difficult or without, you get there and you won't look like rabbit in headlights. You have a real rough idea of what's going on and what questions to ask and what things to do or not do. So the idea here is to watch this video, hopefully give you some background and preparation. So if you do do a safety course, you're well prepared. Or if you don't do a safety course, you can go to a competition to be safe and shoot and enjoy it all you can. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Um, uh, at the end of it, hopefully go through some questions and also we go through the video that's posted. By all means, ask the questions we have. I'm happy to help. All right, cheers. Now, before we start moving around ranges and shooting target, etc., the two crucial things you've got to get across to people new to dynamic shooting is the concept of where their muzzle is pointing and where their trigger finger is. Okay, four rules of fire and safety apply. Don't point something once you shoot it, get your finger off the trigger until you're about to fire, are sacrosanct in practical shooting because by definition you're moving around. So a couple of things to consider. First of all, how you carry your gun around the range. Now there, there are two ways of thought, either muzzle down or muzzle up. There are arguments about which is better for decades, okay? We in Silverstone are muzzled down because we have anti-ricochet floors and we're more concerned about a round going on the backstop than going into the deck, okay? Other ranges are different with concrete floors, different rules. Whatever they're happy with, that's what we'll apply to. IPSC rules state muzzle up, but the rule can override, the range can override that on its own safety and insurance purposes like we do. So walking around a range with a gun held vertically, in this case down, is perfectly fine if it has a breech flag in which is crucial. If you walk around with a breech flag and it falls out, you don't notice, technically you can be disqualified from competition. So bear that in mind, okay? If you go into a muzzle up range, same thing applies. That's how you carry the gun. Now, technically speaking, there is nothing wrong with walking around with your hand on the trigger grip, on the, on the grip. It's not great. For example, my finger's out of the trigger, but it's not easy to tell. So generally speaking, what you try to say to all the candidates going for shooting is think of it like a big black stick, okay? It's not a gun, okay? It's a stick. If you walk around and treat it like a stick, it means by definition, you'll keep the muzzle pointed in the right direction, okay? The second thing is when you're moving around the range, <clears throat> what you're trying to do is making sure that this muzzle is pointed down range at all times and your finger is off the trigger. If you're shooting, that's fine. If you're moving, your finger's off. I'll do it right-handed for the camera. So in this example, standing still shooting, the moment my, shooting, moment my feet move, my finger needs to be out of the trigger guard and very obviously like this, okay? Now this is quite crucial because a lot of people get used to this idea of curling the figure here, just putting it down here. Remember, in the terms of competition, it's not a question whether your finger's out the trigger guard, it's whether the range officer can see it's that trigger guard. If he can't be certain, that the finger is out of the trigger guard, he can, in theory, disqualify you. So it's all been that very obvious, okay? That's a crucial thing to consider, all right? So that's what you're trying to do, is making sure muzzle pointing down range and finger out of the trigger guard. The other thing is range of course of fire. Now at Silverstone, again, we have 180 degrees. Most ranges don't. All of our indoor range 180 degrees, we're with mobile backstops. But you may, some ranges may be as narrow as 20 or 30 degrees. So in theory, 
a gun position, a target position goes further out, you could be disqualified. So bear that in mind. What you're looking to do is keeping the idea is your muzzle is pointed down range at all times. All the exercises that you do, all the shooting you do around apertures, prone, all the different things you're doing, the most important thing is muzzle down range and finger off trigger when you're moving. All right? Okay, so in this first exercise, what we're gonna try and do is try and disconnect the idea of the shooter and having a gun shouldered all the time and moving it away from their position so they can move around the range. Practical shooting is dynamics, moving around. A lot of shooters who are converting to it are used to being more static shooting and shooting positions. So with also dynamic shooting, you're running around. So this exercise, gun's empty with a flag in. I'm gonna take the flag out so it's falling out. What we're trying to do is avoid this concept of people immediately shouldering the firearm and then using that as they move around the range. The problem that you can see from that is that moving forward is okay. I can move forward and keep my gun pointed down range. But if I need to move to the side and it's shouldered, my natural position is to move to the side. Now, okay, it's still awesome, 180 degree cone of fire, but some courses of fire you'll go to in some ranges, much more restrictive. So a movement like this could take you out of the range. So what you want to do is try and get the idea that the gun is no longer permanently in your shoulder, is away from your body. By, do, by moving it away from my body, I can move side to side and still keep the gun pointed down range. Now, so this exercise, what we do in the, in the training, is literally try and get people the idea of moving around a range side to side, which is the most common movement going to get on a range, and keeping the gun pointed down range at all times. So bring it out so bring your pocket. If I try and go around these barrels, you can see I've really got to keep it shouldered. But if I'm moving away from my body, I can move around the barrels much more quickly and still keep my gun pointed down range, which is what you're trying to do. Now, the other thing about it to try and have is that most people when they're um, carrying firearms are not used to carrying it one-handed, okay? Now, in practical shooting, it's actually quite useful. So in this example, the exercises here is to say to people, look, you can go down range and if you need to take one hand off, you can still keep your point down range and it keeps your arm movement clear. So the exercise is that, get yourself used to the gun, out of the, out of the pocket and get used to the idea of moving around the range in front of you and backwards and forwards, okay? Basically practical shooting is entirely that. You're literally running around the range of the gun keeping the gun pointed down range. So that's one thing you can practice in your own range and also for the purposes of, of a, doing a safety course, that's what you end up doing. Okay, so next exercise, actually gonna start shooting. Now one of the most common uh, issues that people find going from static shooting to that dynamic shooting is also the idea of moving around. So the first thing you do in a training course is get used to the idea of moving around with a loaded gun, finger off trigger when you're moving and muzzle pointed down range. So simple exercise, all we're gonna do is go to one side and put two rounds of target about 10 meters away, then move across the range and put two rounds in that target from the same distance each time. Now we're gonna use our strong hand, in my case, left-handed, and then the second exercise we're gonna do is the same process, but shooting with your weak hand. Now that's a really common thing that, that we have to learn in practical shooting, but it's probably the most thing that most people who are new to practical shooting are most out of water out because it's not done it before. Where it's crucial to early on the training course is get used to practicing shooting weak-handed. Main thing about this, get used to moving the gun away from the body as we learned to the first exercise and get used to the fact you are shooting with weak hand each time. So you do need to make sure you have that uh, skill put into place. Nice, simple, either side of the barrier. So I'm going to do one strong-handed and then one and go stronger than weak-handed and that's the kind of exercise to do. All right? Now same again, I won't unload. Again, we're going to move hands and shoot weak hand on the side. And then an unload and show clear. In all the exercise you do in the training courses, you'll run it with the same process, load and make ready, unload, show clear. 
Now I tend not to do the commands and towards the end because I'm more concentrating people making sure they get their movements right from side to side. So I don't use buzzers either. I don't use that until the end of the course as well. What you're trying to get together first of all is get used to the idea of moving around the range with a gun. The crucial thing being finger off the trigger when you're moving and pointing the muzzle down range. All right? Okay, next exercise we're gonna do is the art of going down on one knee and shooting and then standing up again with a loaded gun. <clears throat> again, this all sounds very simple to do. What you're trying to do in these training courses is to get people to practice something not done before. Crucial thing being, each time they're moving with the gun, the finger's off the trigger and maintain that direction pointed down range. A simple exercise, stand in the middle, stand on one knee, shoot two rounds, stand up and up. Okay, nice and simple, but gets used to the idea of going up and down with the gun. And again, unload so quick. Now, looks pretty simple and straightforward, but you'll be amazed in terms of some people when they get used to going on one knee, the natural tendency is the gun to go up. Now, in some ranges, uh, they don't want the gun up. There may be a course of fire, whilst there may be 180 all round, maybe concerned about a backstop, for example. So you need to make sure and practice this. And in terms of training courses, what we do is we do this three or four times per candidate and make sure they can pass each one to make sure they're nice and clear each time. So the side to side traversing, up and down kneeling traversing, each one we do, we need to make sure the finger's off the trigger and making sure that they are keeping control of the muzzle and it's pointing down range at all times. Okay, so the next exercise is shooting prone. Now, prone, most people who've been doing target shooting will be used to doing, so it's quite a common shooting position. But the trick with dynamic shooting is the process of getting down there and getting up again whilst keeping the gun in a safe condition. Now there's two issues for this. Number one, when you do go down onto a prone position from a standing position, again, the tendency is for the gun to move up as you go down. Again, with backstop issues and some range, you need to be careful of that. Secondly, when you're moving around there with your gun and handling it, depending how heavy the gun is, the tendency for your trigger finger to move onto the guard is quite high. So again, that's something else you need to be concentrating and practicing for. So what we're gonna do is go down here, shoot prone, just two rounds again, and then we're gonna get up again. Now there's two aspects about getting up again. It is perfectly acceptable in a course of fire to put the gun on safe and place it on the floor and then stand up and then get the gun. Okay, as long as you stay within one meter of the gun, and ideally as long as you tell the range off so that's what you're planning, okay? What you can't do is dump it down and walk away. That will give disqualification. But it's just perfectly excited. Put the safety on, put the gun on the floor in its loaded condition, stand up and then unload and show clear, rather than try and unload in a prone position, which obviously magazines and this could be complicated. But generally what I'd always advise is safe the RO, you just shout out loud, gun on safe, I'm gonna place it down and stand up and go from there. So that's what I'm gonna do here, all right? Guns on safe. I can then retrieve my gun and I can unload and show clear as necessary. So again, nothing wrong with that. Perfectly acceptable thing to do in terms of the gun itself, rather than try and unload and show clear in the prone position. It's perfectly okay to do it down there, but you're probably fine lying on the floor you might have screwed your shots up, magazine hanging down, it can get can, can, an issue with the gun and the muzzle where it's going. So you can do that. The second thing we're gonna do is call reverse prone. Now this is slightly different, in as much as it is a, uh, it's called combat prone as well. Uh, but essentially it's where you're not in a situation where you're prone facing down range, you are then perpendicular to it. Now I'm gonna shoot left-handed, so I'm gonna shoot on that side. And again, this is something that people get, can get a bit flummoxed about, and the same thing applies. You can still put the gun down, I'll let you clear afterwards. I'm gonna do it by standing up now, showing what the total process behind it. So reverse prone is staying sideways, and the crucial thing about it when I get down and I'll show you is where your leg positions are, because there's a potential you can sweep your own legs in this process, all right? So we'll go again, we'll go loaded start again. This time, down and reverse prone, as you can see, is on my side. Now, safety on, 
keeping my gun same position. Now a couple of things to consider. First of all, my left leg, so I'm left-handed, my left leg is forward and my right leg is back. Okay? The reason why is it closes my body, so I'm leaning into the shot. Now it's more important for a shotgun, where you get more recoil, less recoil than your rifle, but something to consider in terms of positioning. Um, the second thing about it is notice my legs. Now, it's very easy if I bring my leg too far forward, I'm not far away from sweeping it. So be careful about how far forward you bring your leg. The last thing is, to do about what reverse prone is, when I'm down this position, I can quite easily engage targets across the range. Whereas in prone position, I'm not. So it makes it harder to do. Just something to consider. Painting. Unload and show clear. Flag in. And in my case, muzzle down. Okay, that's worth practicing, especially when you have people who have not done reverse prone before. It's basically this several times. Get used to the idea of keeping the gun on target, finger off the trigger, and learn that process behind it. You can do it both sides with the gun on the floor, but you tend to have the vision of when you're, in my, in my case, I'm that way, when you're on the floor, you get less room. Okay, the thing to consider about reverse prone as well, but if you're, you're right handed, is that when you shoot right handed, the ejection port is upwards. I've seen examples where people go reverse prone, shoot it, the cage goes out, straight back inside. <laughs> so bear that in mind when you're shooting reverse prone. All right. Now, no matter what a course of fire that you're doing, I can guarantee one thing you will do at every time, and that's a start position, okay? Every single course of fire is a start position, you've got no choice about that. Now, there are several start positions, um, but generally speaking, the most common one is what we call racing start, which is the gun held parallel to the ground, with the butt touching the hip, okay? Now this can be a bit generous sometimes, up and down, but technically speaking, there's my hip bone here, underneath the mag, my butt must touch the hip, it must be held parallel to the ground, one hand underneath and one hand on the forehand, okay? That is the standard shooting position for most course of fire starts, okay? Now, as you can see, my gun is empty. You only go into the start position once you're instructed to do so by the range officer. And this is what we call racing start, but it's the most common position to have, okay? That's the main one to have. There is also one's called trail, where you hold the gun parallel to the ground again, arm held naturally at your side, holding the gun. This is more common in the UK, but less common internationally. So it's something to bear in mind that some course of fire will do it. And you can have either a strong hand, in my case, I'm left-handed, or you can have weak-handed on the other hand, okay? So those are three main start positions. You could also have the gun separately from you in an unloaded, loaded state, which we'll cover another course of fire in a second. Uh, but generally speaking, those are two main course of fire that you'll have in terms of start positions, okay? But in this case, what will happen is you have your gun in position, load it, and then start position when the beeper goes off, all right? Okay, so I've got to my first course of fire, my first constant, my first stage. I'm nervous as hell. What do I do? I've read the video, I've watched the videos, I've done the training, I know what to expect. What is it I, I need to do to make sure I'm in good state? And you know what the answer is? Nothing. Okay, I always say to all our candidates come through, wonderful thing about being shooting, especially dynamic shooting, is that being stupid won't get you disqualified. Being too clever will. So in this example, I know, the range, I know the course of fire, I know what the range is going to say to me, I know the words and commands, I know the start position, but I need to make sure I do absolutely nothing until I'm instructed to do so by the range officer. I have seen people disqualified because they're ready to go, range officer's down there chatting away and they go, what, I know what I'm doing, All right, let's just get ready, I'll get this in and start loading, you know, magazine's in, everyone's happy, disqualified, okay? You have to make sure that you do nothing until you're instructed to do so, okay? The range officer is control of you. So you being thick and not knowing what's going on is better than knowing exactly what's going on and to load them ready from there. Okay, so first thing is get there, ready to shoot, got my gun in my held position, I got my flag in, or I did have, um, and I'm ready to go. But I'm not gonna do a thing until the range officer say so. That's crucial in practical shooting. I've seen more people disqualified by jumping the gun and trying to get ready than I have seen actually, actually disqualified out on the field. All right, so bear that in mind. Now, a couple of things that are very common in shooting, especially in the UK, is shooting through doors and shooting through apertures. Now, doors are common, common, because we have most of our ranges are tend to be a bit shorter, therefore having doors and things in the way, which is part of practical shooting, is worth learning to have. And a couple of things about doors worth noticing is, first of all, um, it's very easy to sweep yourself. So when you're going through an opening of a door, 
your arm is going forward with the muzzle at some point in time, so learning how to open it and shut it is a good thing to do. The second thing is, is if you come too close to the door, you'll find you're in the way. So it's all about your positioning for the door itself. So if you do get a course of fire that's got a door in it, always try and practice open a door, see what the case is like. Last time I did one, I actually went the wrong way, so that's great. So you have to be careful, so it's worth having that experience. The same thing applies, all you do is make sure that in terms of the training course is you practice it in terms of the course of fire. So this example, I'm gonna do one on a closed door, and I'm gonna, actually you know what, I'll do two. I'll do one door, two rounds, and I'll do another door, two rounds, and the target to about 25 meters away from here. All right? And I'll let show clear. Now, that was a nicely done <laughs> where I had a jam on a gun. And as with all practical shooting, nicely done, you have to deal with it. So in this example, I had a light strike, nothing special. Clear it, carry on. With practical shooting, once the buzzer has started, it's down to you, okay? Gun failures, issues, magazine not running, magazine issues, you carry on, okay? There are only two examples where you'll be called to stop. Uh, one is with a range equipment failure. So for example, on a range where you have a target that's a moving target and the activity hasn't functioned properly, the range officer will call stop, reset, and you reshoot the course of fire. It's not your fault. The second time you'll be called if the range officer thinks is the gun is unsafe. Now, for example, a breech explosion where the barrel's gone. That's a good example. Or there's one jammed in there that you can't get out. Okay, now you're not allowed to use tools on a range to unload. You can't get your pocket knife out and undo it. Use your fingers if need be, but it may all be at that point in time, you're gonna zero the stage anyway, just make sure it's safe. Okay, so in terms of that, light strike came through, carry on. Okay, it's quite a useful on video, frankly. And you see from the door perspective, the main thing to consider is that I've got the door shut. It's very easy for me, if I have my gun in this position, that I'm gonna end up sweeping my hand. See, that will get you disqualified, because technically speaking, that's an unsafe condition on the gun. So I've got to make sure my gun is out of the way, pull it open, and then go up and shoot. Now, same thing applies. So if I get up close and I'm in my shoulder, I'm in the, talking about in shoulder positions, and I open the door, for a start, I'm now a bit awkward. Once the door's open, I'm having to step right back to here and then go forward. If the gun's out of my pocket, then what I can do is I can open the door, I can bring the gun forward, shoot, then I bring it back, I can shorten my distance and do the same again, all right? So the crucial thing about loom doors is just, just getting used to them, okay? They're a bit different to learn in terms of process, but it's something worth practicing. So in all the courses that we do, safety courses, we always run them through a door just to make sure we get experience what's going on with it, all right? Right, now as well as doors, probably even more common in terms of practical shooting is shooting through apertures. We're quite mean in Silverstone, we like to have a door. <laughs> with an aperture behind it. The apertures are any kind of hole that you're shooting through, okay? It could be tiny hole, it could be from up distance, it could be further back. The beauty about apertures, and this is quite an easy one, is that you don't need to put your rifle all the way through to shoot it. It's time consuming. The more confidence you've got of where your dot is and where it's zeroed, the less light you're gonna hit it. However, things at angles like this, when you're shooting on a canted dot, you may have your, your, your dot on the target, but your muzzle, maybe actually pointing down the wood. So if you go to a range and aperture, I guarantee the little box all around where people have shot them, okay? So it's useful to have the experience and to practice shooting through an aperture. So in this example, I'm just gonna do a couple cut shots, quick down, shoot down, shoot to my target, and making sure I'm through the barrel, okay? Now, same thing applies. So again, as we did in the earlier exercise, if I am going through the, the, the aperture to make sure I'm on target, okay, it's gonna be quicker for me to bring it off my shoulder and around than it is to, to walk in and then come out again from my shoulder. All right, so, so bear that in mind in terms of movement. As well, you also find, in our case, we make the move ball. It makes it really awkward, and so you can't really lean on them very well. So much as you can, which we'll cover in a session. All right, so same thing applies. Let's just have a couple of rounds on this one. So in that example, I decided to go through the aperture a little bit slower, 
but it means I definitely wasn't going to hit the wood. And again, and I'm on class, I forget. So again, that's the sort of thing in a training course you would do, try and shoot through some apertures just to get the practice for it. So you do get your first course of fire and you see one, you're bearing in mind where your optic is, where your muzzle is, what you're going to shoot. Now, another common bit of furniture you'll find on practical course of fires are barricades. They could be fixed in place, they could be a uh, side of a doorway, they could be more distance touch shooting, or this would be something that you can lean on. Now, this is a training barricade, so it's reasonably solid. And here, the beauty of what you need to learn, especially when, when you're doing your walkthrough on your course of fire, is to practice, obviously not with the gun, you're not allowed to walk around the range of the gun, is to get used to the height of it. So, for example, I know that's actually not a bad height for me um, in terms of that. So, if I was a shooting on that. There you go. Quite happy with that. A little bit high, but not too bad. That may be better for me. In fact, it's much better. I've got a nice solid shooting position. So what you do when you're doing a course of fire is to just have a look at it. Now you won't be able to bring a gun to the course of fire, but having an idea is there. And reading really about it, what you're trying to do is try and make use of this. Now you can use a side, for example. And again, then he applies. Again, I'm left-handed. I've got a little barricade thing. It's just a little airsoft thing, costs 10 quid. And you can use that to give you some pressure on the barricade and lean into it, okay? Which is, you've got to be careful not leaning too much into it, but a lot of people, it's all practice type process. For me, I tend to use it as a guide and I use my hand on the barricade and my thumb is a support. But remember, you may have a weak handed stage, in which case you have to practice this. So in my case, I would tend to shoot same way and that way. So there's different ways of doing it. So what you're trying to do is get yourself used to a nice stable shooting position. This example, which is going to be more stable? Me holding it to the side, or me being nice and balanced on top? Clearly, that's your better choice if you can. Okay, but again, for the purpose of training courses and do your part, having an example of how to do this, where you move them around. So what I'm going to do in this little, little practice is I'm going to put a couple of rounds through on the side, go down through the side, then I'm going to go down to one knee and go from here. Just put three rounds on each one if I can. All right? Empty. Muzzle down. So again, it's that kind of practice, what you're going to be doing in the course of fire, that sort of thing you should do in a safety course and practice and process to make sure you understand, you know, just the, the physical movements. Most of practical shooting is about different position shooting. So the more you can do that in a training course, learning each one when you go to a course of fire, you've done it before. All right? Okay, so you've got the course of fire, it's your turn to shoot. Um, you're sitting here waiting to be instructed. As we said, don't do anything that you're told to do so. What happens next? Well, first of all, the range officer will use a set of words that are consistent across all the disciplines and all around the world. English is a common language for IPSC, which is helpful for us. But there are some subtle differences in terms of what you do at the end of the course of fire, depending on what kind of firearm you're shooting. I've aimed this course primarily at mini rifle, but I'll cover LBP and shotgun at the end of that, just so you know. Now, first you do, you're sitting there waiting. The range officer will shout range is clear from the previous patching, then he will talk to you and say, you may load and make ready. Now, if it's an unloaded start, he'll just say, make ready, or see no loading. But first do is at that point in time, that's the time you then get your gun up, flag out, in this case, load and ready. I've got an empty magazine here, but same thing applies. And I'm ready. At that point in time, my safety's on, I'm ready to go. My butt is touching that on my hip. I'm ready to go. Now, the range officer at this point in time will then say, shooter, are you ready? Okay, at that point in time, you can either say yes, no. If you do nothing, then that's an indication to the range officer you're ready to shoot. So it'll be loaded up ready, and it'll be shooter, are you ready? Then he will say, stand by. And then at that point in time, hand in my pocket, he will then, between one and three seconds, at the buzzer off. So I'll hand it with my hand eggs, I'm on my own here, right? So it'll be loaded and ready. Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. Then the buzzer goes off. That's a timer. And what this does, that, that buzzer, that should indication to safety off, and I'll go shoot the course of fire. Okay, this also timer uh, records each shot fired. So he'll be hovering around you somewhere near the gun so you can pick up the actual shots. Indoor range is very easy. Outdoor range you can have a little bit further away. Once you finish shooting, okay, he will then say, he or she will then say, if you have finished, unload and show clear. 
Now, it's a question, okay? He's not telling you you've finished, he's asking. So have you finished shooting? If you have, you then unload and show clear. So the purpose of the rifle, it's magazine out, action back. And what you do is you hold the gun, and I guess left-handed always makes it complicated, for the range of to look inside the action and confirm it's clear. Okay, it's still your responsibility, but you are simply showing him that the gun is clear. At that point in time, you can then insert the breech flag and then muzzle down. Okay, so the instructions are very simple in your rifle. It is, uh, learn it ready, um, shoot are you ready, stand by, then the beep. At the end of shooting, if you finish, unload and show clear. Now, at that point in time, what we say here is insert flag, muzzle down, just to remind people where we are. But it's not an official thing, you won't hear it every course of fire, and some ranges are the same thing. So you'll simply have, if finished, unload, show clear, and we say, if clear, insert flag, muzzle down. Okay, but there's subtle differences in different ranges. If it's LBP, or pistol, what you'll be able the same applies in terms of, shoot out, you ready, stand by, beep. If you finished, unload and show clear, then you show the clear action is clear to the to the range officer, at that point in time is then hammer down and holster, okay? Now, we tend not to do it too much in LBP in UK because dry firing a 2-2 rifle can damage a firing pin. But that's the same command I have with, with, with full bore pistols, don't have that issue. So it'll be hammer down and holster. If it is shotgun or it is rifle, same thing applies. Do you ready? Stand by, beep, if you finished, unload, show clear. Then it will say, at the end of it, it will say, fire the action, clear the action. So in those circumstances with a shotgun, what they do is they literally clear the gun, pull the trigger to show it's empty, then open the action up again, and then it's flagging from that point. Okay, so we just slightly different, but they're all very consistent in terms of different wording around the world going down. Okay, so that's it. Judah, are you ready? Stand by, beep. If you finished, unload, show clear. Do your bit, muzzle down. Once the muzzle is down, the range officer will say, range is clear, forward and reset. And that's the time for everybody else to go forward and help patch the score the stage. All right, you'll hear that consistently what you do, but the important thing to do is, as I said at the beginning of it on this video, don't do a thing until you're told to do so. Okay, but the gun is your responsibility, it's your choice, and hence the end of it saying, if you finished, um, it is your responsibility if you decide to finish shooting, at that point in time you can then, you can obviously clear the gun, uh, a flag in and muzzle down. All right? Now, one other thing you'll also see in course of fire is a completely unloaded start with the gun not on you at all, okay? Quite common because it makes it quite fun and it can be a loaded gun or an unloaded gun. So for example, the load and ready command may be just a base load ready, put the gun in the barrel, on the commence of the buzzer, shoot the target. Now if you have an unloaded start, okay, the command will be make ready, okay, not load ready because you're not loading. So this example, I'm going to base do an unloaded start, gun on table, and then the, on the buzzer going off, I'm going to pick up the gun, load it, shoot it, and I'll show clear. All right, so same thing applies. Now this example, the safety can be off, okay? The gun is completely empty, and given a choice between the action forward or back, always have the action back, if there's an option, it should, if they give you one. Um, because obviously once you're loaded, you can then quickly action forward. Same applies in AR, I'm on a strip of, but same applies in AR. So example, so my gun can be down. Normally there will be an instruction saying the gun must be in a certain position. Normally the barrel with the muzzle, sorry, with the butt, further forward in the back. And you'll see that quite commonly in course of fire to stop people leaning on the butt and it flipping up, so it can't go forward from that. So a course of fire says magazine on, on the table, along with the barrel, buzzer goes off, and now you load it. So the flag is out, the safety's off, and the action is back. And it's something you can practice over and over again with an empty gun. Loading an empty gun is gonna be a crucial part of practical shooting, because you will see that in a course of fire quite common. And learning that and getting used to your gun is gonna be quite crucial. And again, in a training course, we try and make sure they do this a few times to get used to the idea of having an empty gun, what they do with it. Again, it's out of the comfort zone for people who are normally more used to static shooting. All right? So, same thing. So, unload, show clear again. Flag in. Muzzle down. Okay, that's an unloaded start. Now, while we're doing unloaded starts, um, there's also in the gun condition, which I'm going to cover now. So let's get my magazine out of the way. There are three kinds of gun condition, okay? And they're cleverly called option one, option two, option three. And this is for mini rifle. Again, there are different ones for LBP and for shotgun as well. So option one is a completely loaded gun, okay? So that's it. So the option one will be magazine in, action forward, safety on, 
ready to go. That's option one. All right, so we always detail out the, the, the course of fire in, in, in perfect, but in terms of full, but you'll say an option one option is option one is to start the gun loaded. Okay, the second one you have is option two. Now option two is the gun will have a magazine in it, but the action will be closed on empty chamber. This example, I close the chamber, now magazine's on. Okay, now this is quite a common start position because it makes you think. For example, I now go, if the buzzer goes off now, I go safety off, I'm not gonna do anything. There's no round in the chamber. So it reminds you that you have to basically wrap the action to shoot the gun. That's a common start position because it does make you think. And from the perspective of, a, of a, a way of ruining your score very quickly, forgetting that you've got nothing in the chamber is quite a, quite a good way of doing it. So in this example, nothing in there, safety's on, start position, I've got to, Bracket first before I unload and show clear. Okay. So option one, option two, option one fully loaded, option two, loaded gun with a magazine in, but nothing, a chamber with the action forward. Um, and then finally got option three, which is empty gun. Now an empty gun, the safety doesn't matter. Okay, it can be off. Okay, and you could be a start position as normal with empty gun, we have to load, it could be on a barrel, it could be somewhere else in the course of fire. But empty gun is completely empty. So option one, loaded, option two, Load an empty chamber with the action forward. Option three, complete empty gun. Those are three ways you have, and you can mix them up. You could have an option three gun in a weak hand trail position. You could have an option one gun in a racing start position. Okay, there's all different ways you can mix it all up, and that's what makes the beauty of the system. All you do is remember it. Now, a good range officer will be helpful on this. He'll try and remind you. We certainly try and say, look, you know, option one is loaded. Explain the details. Eh? Some are a bit more read the rules type stuff, which I'm kind of hoping we're getting away from a little bit, but certainly we try and help if we can. All right, so those are your three option positions. There's your start positions as well. All right. All right, target types. Okay, the, the two main types and targets is either going to be a paper target like this, or it's going to be a popper or some kind of steel target instead. Okay, generally all targets, this is a full size IPSC target, is also a MIDI and also a micro. Okay, they're all the same shape, they're all the same size, simply scale down in size. The poppers can be any number of sizes. Generally speaking, they need to be about six inches across. And how it works is that a popper must be hit to fall over and fall over to score. Okay, so if you hit it, it doesn't fall over, you need, to, you need to make sure you score it. Okay, and count five points per hit. Okay, paper targets are called on a mic. So you have an alpha zone here, which is five points. You have a Charlie zone here, which is three points. And you have a delta zone here, which is one point. There's no Bravo because it used to be the head, which is awesome, we don't do that anymore. So Alpha, Charlie, Delta. Okay, so as you can see, going from a five to a one drops you four points. So accuracy is quite important for a mini rifle. Less so things like shotgun, because they're, they're more in terms of plate targets. But in terms of mini rifle, one of the beauties of it is accuracy. Now, I've done a few videos about speed, but actually, I don't know the answer any more than anyone else does. But generally speaking, try and get them in the Alphas, try and avoid your Deltas. Charlies are probably acceptable if you're fast enough. Okay, but different kind of targets. And the thing about it is only the top two best scores count. You can put 10 rounds in there, no one cares, only two will score. So example, people that like to shoot three shots into things at distance to make sure, that's no bad idea. But remember each shot you take will take roughly half a second, add that together over 15, 20 targets, and it's gonna drop your score down. Okay, so always remember two into it. If you think you've missed, you're not sure, pile one in. It is faster to put a round in than look down a scope and check. I was guilty of that for years, saying, have I hit it? You know, just shoot another round in, it's much faster. But generally speaking, you get confident in terms of getting alphas if you can, it'll improve your score. All right? Okay, one thing is worth covering in terms of courses of fire are foot faults, okay? Foot fault is any kind of red marker that designates the edge of the course of fire. Now, we tend to use a lot of tape in the in Silverstone because also you have lots of flat floors, etc. It's not ideal. In our ideal world, what you want is one of these, a little wooden block, which is fixed in place. Now, the rules state that you can go up to, you can go on, but you can't go over. So you can see how a wooden block is better than tape, but you can do what you can. It basically means that you can stand on it and shoot and be fine. You can't go over it. So once I put my foot over the the marker there, there'll be a penalty per shot fired. So it's something to consider in the course of fire looking down the floor in front of you to see where your footfalls are. All right. 
Other thing about foot faults is also that the apertures which are, you can shoot from a lean from have to be inside the course of fire. Now I've been caught a few times where you have a line that designates where the edge of the round is. This barrier is inside the course of fire, so it can be used, but this barrier is outside of it. It may be a tempting thing to use it. For example, if the line goes all the way up the wall here, this particular barrier could not be lent to gone and used. So it's worthwhile checking. Now, a nice RO, and I hope good all ROs, will point this out to people, but technically speaking, they don't have to. So it's one of those ones you check where the lines are and make sure where you're shooting from is within that area and making sure you're not touching or going over the line. All right? One other thing we have to do is basically do, essentially it's a recoil test, which is a bit pointless with your rifle because they're recoilless, but the idea of balancing on something and then taking into account what recoil does to your body is quite crucial to do. Uh, you could appear to a long go, of course, that involves shotgun as well. So this is more important for shotgun, but we do it with your rifle, I'll just make sure. Basically, get used to this where you're standing in a very tight, difficult position and coping with whatever recoil the gun will give you to keep you on balance, as it were. So a little exercise to do for this, and of course is give them something stupid to stand on, make it awkward, cut the rounds on target, okay? The trick to doing this thing is keep your knees bent, okay? If you stand rigidly up, even a mini rifle, a bit of recoil will try and unsettle you. If you bend your knees, you become a suspension unit as a gut, as a, as a person absorbing that recoil. More important with shotgun, where there's much more recoil coming back, but it's worthwhile doing the same test for mini rifle. The same thing applies, get up here, two rounds in, job done. Now, usually these things, if it's a loaded start, it's probably easier to load and then get on, on top rather than trying to balance your way out of the place, the answer. And again, the same applies when you have a start position, which is a bit more complicated, get yourself in position, loaded up in the gun so you're ready, then move in position, all right? Example, little narrow little position. I keep my knees bent. Another, another light strike. And again, same thing. If I stand up straight, is it giving me any? Not really, no, to be fair, but the concept's the same. Having your knees bent gives you that recoil position so you're in control, all right? Now, the last exercise that we do on our safety courses before we start doing courses of fire is we call north, south, east, west. So I'm at the bottom of the range here now, I've got four barrels. The barrel near the targets is north, the barrel nearest the camera is south, west, and east. What the candidate will do is they'll start off in a loaded position and I, range officer, will shout, north, south, east and west, and a point shouting that north, I'll run forward to the flat barrel, put two rounds on that target. Then I'll shout west, east, north, okay? Now what I'm going through is what I'm looking to do is to make sure that the candidates are able to traverse around the range safely, keeping that muzzle point down range, bring or trigger and they're moving. Okay, and they go around and around, around. I normally start off a walking pace to get used to the idea of it, then I move them to running to make sure that, that they keep the, the blood up, as it were, and also making sure they keep in a safe condition. And as you can imagine, this condition, the temptation for guns to go the wrong way, to sweep themselves, running backwards, is quite high. It's a stress death to live with that reason. Now, during it as well, I will shout at some point in time, mag change. Okay, at that point in time, the candidate will literally have to change the mag. Now, a lot of people don't have mag belts and haven't bought the magazines yet, etc. So what we do for those guys is I make them take the gun, magazine out of the gun, wave it down by the side, and then put it back in. Okay, what I'm trying to do is engender the idea that they are responsible for their own magazines, and therefore they can move around as they're going through. Now, when you're doing a safety course, we're not trying to teach them the best shooters in the world, we're trying to keep them safe. Okay, so crucial here is not to run around like a little idiot, but to make sure you're nice and safe in terms of process. So what I'll do is just do a couple rounds of place, hopefully not get out of breath for the camera, and do a mag change in between, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with north, and I'm gonna just do a circle round, and maybe a couple of others, all right? And done. As you can see, got a light strike again. What I've got to do, clear it and carry on, okay? Just like in competition. Now, I didn't do a mag change in there because I forgot. <laughs> but the only concept is there, is moving around the range, keeping the run on target. Now, one thing I didn't do 
what can be done is moving downrange. And the example I did to go back down the range, I moved back like this. Muzzle's pointing down range, nice and safe. The alternative way of doing it, is to literally grab the gun and run back. If you've got a long distance to go, it's gonna be significantly faster to run in the direction you want to go and travel, holding the gun that way. It just means it slows you down more on, the, on target otherwise. There's no right or wrong, there's simply different ways of doing it, but certainly for a little short distance, I don't think it's worth holding the gun that way. If it was all the way back, I'd say it probably was. Okay, but the idea here is simply moving around the range. Now everyone has to pass this in terms of we do these courses. If they don't pass this, they can't go through to the actual stages we do as part of the course. So this is the bit which is practical shooting. Move them around. Now sometimes you can throw in and say, right, north is a needing shooting position. East is a weak handed position. West is a prone position. Now I've tried that in the past. It's really quite fun, but it slows it down a lot. I don't think it gains too much more than going through trying to jam it all together. So I tend to keep it standing, just the mag change in between. Once that's done, then you start doing courses of fire and then you're measuring that as you go further forward. Now it's worth noting in all these exercises you do for a safety course, one thing you haven't seen or heard of the matter is a buzzer. Now I tend not to run the timer in terms of safety courses because I don't want to inject that level of stress and the idea against the clock for the new shooters coming on board. I want them to concentrate on muzzle safety, trigger fingers. Now the course of our safety courses, what we do is once you've done a north, south, east, west, and you've passed all those in aperture shooting and all the things you do, we then do a minimum of three courses of fire, a long, a medium, and a short. We don't score it. They're a combination of paper targets and poppers, so the cannons all shoot both, but it is done with the buzzer to get used to the process behind it. Now in those course, in those safety courses we run here, Every candidate must pass perfectly each course of fire, okay? They'll add one warning for a trigger finger and one warning for a muzzle over those three courses of fire. They do not get a second one. It is a pass and fail course as far as we're concerned. Now, if you fail here, doesn't mean you can't shoot. Doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It just simply means we will concentrate on you, make a note what the way the issue was. And next week you come for a competition, we'll keep an eye on going from there. Now, speaking of competitions, we don't demand you do a safety course. Now, in an ideal world, I think it's always best to have training if you can, and certainly pass safety courses. But for the competitions you run here, uh, because of the levels that they are, we don't require a safety course, okay? However, if it is your first competition or your first series competitions, you will be asked to wear a novice cross on your back. Now we do this, it's very similar to motorsport, where it simply shows the fact that you are new shooting, and therefore, Two reasons for it. Number one, it means your fellow shooters can give you support, encouragement, pat you on the back. You started this wonderful journey of practical shooting and you're maybe a bit nervous, a bit concerned. So back, pat on the back for doing going through a process. Second thing Novice Cross does, it tells the range officer that you are new. Okay, so it means a bit more help, a bit more assistance, a bit more guidance, you know, being a bit, not necessarily being lessening on the safety side, of course not, but actually a bit more help to encourage them to shooting. Something that we've been doing for last year or so in Silverstone, We'd encourage other rangers to do it if they can. They're not expensive, they're 50, 60 p each per sticker, um, and it's worthwhile doing we can. So that means we can, you can run a competition here without going through safety training courses, but it does mean, of course, we don't compromise on safety. The like you've been disqualified is higher. <laughs> we try and avoid it if we can, and we encourage you as a new shooter to basically slow down, concentrate on getting your accuracy right, and going from there. The purpose behind is really to encourage people shooting without necessarily making go through the procedures. Now, ideally, I would always recommend training and always recommend a safety course when it is, but it's not compulsory for here. We do a different way of doing it to make sure you're safe. All right? Right, I'm gonna cover a bit about patching now. Patching is a bit of a bugbear of mine, as a lot of people know. End of the day, if we don't patch our targets and participate in our sport, our sport suffers. We did some measurements in, the, in Silverstone a while ago where if everyone patched this should do, we could add on two more courses of fire to every competition we did because of the efficiency of resetting the targets that allows the time to run this course. So an eight stage turns to a 10 stage, a 10 stage turns to a 12 stage here. Okay, if you patch, you are helping your sport and giving you more shooting to do. So that's something to consider. But a lot of new shooters say to me, well, when do I patch? What's the process? What's the rule? I watch other people and I see them stand around with their thumbs at their butts. What do I follow? Now, I have a simple rule on patching, okay? You don't patch when you're shooting. Makes the scores hard to do, frankly. You don't patch straight after you've shot. 
use that time to recharge your magazines and check you're okay. And you don't patch if you're the next shooter coming. So if you're on deck, next person to shoot, don't patch, right? Get ready, be ready for the range officer to call you forward. When you're shooting, don't patch. When you finish shooting for the next shooter, you don't patch, you charge your mags, check your gun, good to go. At every other time, you should be forward patching targets. Even on short course to fire, if every single person walked through on a nine-person uh, um, nine um, squad and only those three people don't shoot, it means that six people on every time they repatch is patching a target. Now, we've done times and measurements of this sort of process. If everyone does that and even just walks forward and puts one patch on the target, just one, you drop the time, reset time by 40%. Okay, it's that big a difference. So we know we can add on course to fire if you patch. All right, so as new shooters coming into the sport, you've got to do the right thing. And the right thing is, don't patch in your next shoot, don't patch in shooting, obviously, and don't patch one after, once you charge your mags. After that, your job is there to patch and reset those courses of fire. Okay, we make a, a, a laugh fit, running forward together, obviously once the range is clear. But patching and lack of it, personally, is probably our biggest danger to our sport, because people get good and they get lazy, or they get arrogant, and it's not good for the sport itself. So if you're new to the sport, that's your process. All right? So there we have it. That's it. You've done your safety course. You've done your different courses of fire. You've done your start positions. You know the rules, regulations. And you know what to expect when you go to your first competition. Um, there's no uh, replacement for training. We don't recommend that you don't do any training at all. But the design of this video is to simply give you a heads up and to hopefully allow you to shoot a competition without going through some expense or difficulty of doing a training course you may or may not need. Um, always good to have training, but ideally we want to get people forward shooting and the best way forward is to make it open and try and help. Um, there'll be links and comments if you can during the course of the video. If you have any questions or any answers, please do ask. We're here to help. Uh, the whole idea of here at Silverstone Shooting Centre and practice shooting generally is to make it more encompassing and welcome to people to start the sport. Uh, once you're going, it's not expensive to do. There's a bit of cost to get set up of like all sports, but once you have that cost in place, it's not expensive to shoot as a competition, not expensive to shoot as a sport, and it's safe, one of the safest forms of shooting in the UK, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, hopefully see you out the circuit. Cheers.